Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Live in the Lux life for less. Hi, I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Affordable Luxury for Your Home. And Kelly, this is something that I feel like you and I do without even thinking about it. We love nice things, but we don't like paying for it. (laughs) So true. (laughs) And you can really get away with it. Luxury doesn't have to have a high price tag. Sure, I mean, once in a while you want to splurge. We've got episodes on that. But you can add affordable luxury to your home. And we are going to give you so many tips and tricks today on how you can do that and even some specific items. And I think it's a lot about an attitude and the overall vibe of your home also lends a sense of luxury. Yeah. And I think there's three approaches to take here in general. And one is to buy expensive quality things, but you buy them slowly over time and just kind of budget yourself. And you just kind of take your time adding these things to your home. So that's approach one. Approach two is to buy the knockoffs. You can afford them a lot cheaper. They're not the high-end thing, but they kind of have that high-end look without the price. And the third approach, which I think is the one that you and I take, is that is being a good shopper. Mm. So I think if you're going to be a good shopper, you can get some fantastic things. For example, I was out with Evie shopping about a month or two ago, and I was actually looking for some rattan dining chairs, but I happened to find these rattan rockers, and they were 65% off. Not what I was looking for, but really gorgeous, and I nabbed them. And I got the last four in the store. Go, girl. I love it. (laughs) And I saw those on your Instagram, and they are fantastic, and they look like such high-quality rattan. I love Anita's three-pronged approach. And you can take all three approaches, or you could, uh, right, Anita? Or you could Mm -hmm. break it down and do one of, of the three. I think each one is really going to help you add this affordable luxury to your home. You know, the first one, you need a little patience, but we've talked about this before. You add one terrific piece every year. Well, in five years, you have five fabulous pieces of furniture. Well, and I like to think of that as like the French woman with the Hermes scarf Mm -hmm. that maybe costs $300. And I think an American woman just kind of bristles at that and says, I could buy 10 scarves for that. But- This one scarf you can wear all the time. Nobody that you're running into on the street knows it's your only one. And it's okay if you wear it all the time. It's this fantastic scarf. So I think that that is an approach that Americans don't always think of, but I think the French kind of do it naturally. And even if you see the same people over and over again, heck, that's a really great scarf and it's going to (laughs) really work with a lot of things. So go for it. I am fortunate enough to have one of those. And I agree with you. I tie it on my handbags. And it's just fantastic. And I've had it for so many years. And I'd rather How long have you had it? Since law school. I think this goes to the point, too. When you buy the quality thing, you're going to keep it. If you had been buying cheaper scarves all the time, Mm -hmm. don't you think you would have ended up spending more? Than you did on that one scarf. Oh, I'm sure. And then I'd have to store all these, you know, fourteen ninety nine scarves <laughs> everywhere. It goes with everything. And certainly if you're pulling the all black, which I do a lot. Okay, back to our homes. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I, it still applies. It still applies though. It does apply. When you have limited luxury dollars, which ninety nine percent of us do have limited luxury dollars. I like to focus on the smaller things that you can touch and interact with every day. So it's an easy way to add this affordable luxury. It's not going to cost a whole lot, but you're going to notice it and you're going to experience it on a daily basis. So the smaller things can really make a big impact. So think about the glasses that you drink out of, even the hand soap that you're using in your bathrooms, the towels that you're using either in your bathrooms or even- Hold on, you're covering all my good ideas. 
So, <laughs> okay, obviously we're on the same page here. Bedroom textiles. These smaller luxuries that you will be engaging with on a daily basis can really up the luxury level in your home. So true. And uh, back to the scarf idea uh, for your home, applying it to your home. If you buy one really wow piece, like that Hermé scarf, you buy one wow piece for your house, that's going to be what your eye gravitates to. That's what's going to be what your guests notice that wow piece. So your house does not have to be filled with wow pieces. You don't have to have a closet full of Hermes scarves, but just those few pieces here and there, that's going to make you happy. That's going to elevate your home. And that's what's going to be, that is going to be what everyone notices. So that's one of the tips is just buy a few of these really high ticket items. Right. And you don't want to have a whole lot of wow pieces. That's confusing. And they're going to all get lost in the mix. So they're not, they're no longer a wow when there's wow, 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 wow. Right. (laughs) So really the wow should sort of stand alone. Yeah. You don't want to overwhelm people where they have to sit down to take it off. Yeah. (laughs) Don't overwow anyone. So, and you also want to stick to natural and organic materials. You're going to get a better look. You're going to get a better feel and it's going to feel more luxe. So obviously if you're doing something in polyester, if you can do it in silk or in a linen, it's just going to feel better in your hand and it's going to look better. It's going to add this element to your home. So I think let's let's elevate what you just said or repeat it. Use natural fibers in your home whenever you can. I like to use wool rugs, linen sheets, uh, cotton pillows. Silk is a little touchy. I love silk, but it stains so easily. So I kind of avoid that one. But so many of these natural elements are going to add a feeling of elegance to your home. And oddly enough, they hold up better than you think they're going to. Oh, they most certainly do. I hate to keep repeating the scarf thing, but it's just such a great metaphor for everything we're talking about today. If I had bought a whole bunch of $20 scarves, they wouldn't have lasted this long. If I, Especially if I was using them a lot, they would just fray. They wouldn't look great. The color would fade. So buy quality, buy good fabrics, buy natural materials when you can. And we're going to get to some individual items. I and mean, we know everyone loves that when we talk about specific items. But there's also some practices or ways to live in your home that can elevate your luxury level. And most of these, It's just doing something a little differently, perhaps. So it might not cost you anything, or it may just cost you a little bit of money. So some practices that that can really elevate the luxurious feel of your home and, of course, your life is eat at a table. Don't eat in front of the TV with a tray, right? Sit down at the table, use candles, use fabric napkins, and really make the meal an event. Make it special. And you can do this really easily every day. Just have the things on hand. And sure, occasionally it's fun to sit and watch a movie but and watch and eat your dinner, but maybe save that for a weekend night or something like that. Maybe just to decompress and add a little daily luxury to your life. Start eating at a table if you're not doing that. It can be in the kitchen table. It could even be at the peninsula or at the island, but add a surface (laughs) where you're sitting (laughs) down, you know, maybe with someone else in your family. But even when I'm here by myself, which is kind of lovely sometimes just to have a meal by yourself, maybe with your book or a magazine or something like that, I'll light a candle. I just do the same thing because I'm worth it. Well, I was going to ask you, mm because I know in previous episodes, you've talked about how you use linen napkins or yeah. I should maybe not linen but you use a cloth napkin every night for dinner and you light candles every night are you still doing that oh yeah I've been doing this for forever I think the actual cloth napkins probably started oh maybe in the early 2000s before that you know you get the pack of vanity fair or what have you at the grocery store but then I decided why am I putting all this paper into a landfill every night we can just use the cloth napkins and for 
a lot of reasons, but I really like doing that. And it's just become part of what I do. And I'm not an ironer. So I'm, I'm not setting a table for Thanksgiving dinner and ironing napkins every night. Of course, sometimes they're wrinkly, whatnot, but they're clean usually. And that's just what happens. <laughs> well, I actually like to iron. And I know. What I, I, because it's just, you can transform something in le a, a napkin in less than a minute. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy looking at it all wrinkled and then having it all smooth and ironed. So your ironing is my spray painting because I transformed oh. something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Same I, I feeling, get you on different that. thing. <laughs> but right. And we had uh, Evie has, uh, this is actually her second time she's hosted a tea at our house for her church group. And I think they're just so... Uh, surprised because I get out the linen napkins, I get out the silver spoons, the regular, the china teacups, and a lot of these are all vintage, and they just really enjoy it, and they appreciate that it's, that they're, they're the pretty things that we're using. Yes, and we it don't feels just luxurious. Wait. Right. It feels I mean, special. I have a set of these little sterling silver spoons that were actually from a Belgian military school that have like a soldier on them that are oh. really charming. Oh, I would and they're, love to see those. <laughs> the, oh, they're super cool and, uh, you know, kind of masculine, kind of fun. And we use those for our coffee or our cappuccinos, whatever we have, or tea in the morning. I use those every day. And to me, what's the point of having those if they're in a drawer? So I, that's one of my tips is what you're saying. Use your good stuff. And I know my mother-in-law had her favorite dishes with the, the Lennox with the gold painted mm -hmm. wheat on them. And she told me, they're, they're gold, they're gold. You know, we're, we're, these are for special occasions. And when I was first married, I thought, okay, I guess, you know, these are for holidays. Well, the holidays came and went. They didn't come out. Birthdays <laughs> came and went. They didn't come out. Um, anniversary celebrations, graduations. They were never used the entire time she was alive. That, that I was aware of. You're right. It, and then I That's inherited sad. them. And then I don't, they're not really my thing. So all, how many years did they just sit waiting to come out? Right. Yes. That's so silly, right? But that's what a lot of us do. And I mean, it's just in a cabinet or in a cupboard. It's hard to get to, or maybe you are concerned about having to hand wash them because there's gold detailing on them or something like that. But just use them, take them out, make those special things that you're holding up for a special occasion, a, an everyday thing, or, you know, at least maybe if you, on the weekends or something like that, but make it part of your life because what's the point? It's just stuff at the end of the day. And if you're not enjoying it, you're just squirreling it away for some special occasion. Well, I think we're all pretty aware that every day is a special occasion, right? We've, that's been hammered home, certainly, in the last mm -hmm. few years. If you didn't get the memo on that, that's what's happening. Every day yeah. is a special occasion. So go for it. Yeah, don't be waiting for a special occasion. If you use your silver every day uh, as you dry it, uh, that takes the place of polishing. It's not going to need to be polished because you're basically keeping it polished. So... Why not? And then if a dish breaks because you used it, well, oh, well, then just mix in. It's just an excuse to go buy a few <laughs> extra dishes to mix in. It's not a big deal. And I think my mother-in-law thought, well, I need to save these so they can be passed down generation to generation. Well, guess what? We inherited them. They sat in the on the shelf for several yeah. years. Finally, I said, you know what? These are taking up space. And I took them down the consignment shop. And mm. And so she might have been saving them, but Evie didn't want them. I didn't want them. And here's the worst part. They didn't sell. <gasps> Nobody wanted them. Nobody wanted them. So they ended up, well, you know, after a certain point, I think it's 90 days, it's considered a donation. So I basically gave them away. Oh. I mean, and so, and all this time she could have been using them when she was on the earth. So really sad. Yeah. Well, hopefully whoever got them, and what a deal. Well, I, w I wish I was there on the donation day <laughs> when that became a donation. because. Yeah, perfect thing to use every day. But even if you're saying to yourself, oh, well, I don't have Lennox China and I don't have silver. You don't need that really to be luxurious. We're just saying, if you have that sort of stuff, don't save it, use it. Well, and if you do want it, just go down to the thrift store or consignment <laughs> store and just, well, I mean, that's my thing is, you know what? You don't need 
a service for 12 in sterling silver just get one spoon you know yeah, yeah. just to, if you're the only one that cares about it just buy one for yourself to use in your tea and then use it every morning right and again it's back to one of those things where you're going to be touching it and seeing it every day and that's going to elevate your day and elevate the level of luxury in your home but any type of dish any type of table setting whether it's white plates from target or what have you if you set it out and you, you put a candle, whether it's a taper or you have just a regular candle on the table with you and you have a cloth napkin, it's just going to feel really lovely. And you're going to feel like you're carving out time for something special, sharing a meal with someone else or just enjoying it on your own. So that's an easy way to incorporate a luxurious practice, if you will, into your everyday. Another suggestion is do things like spritzing some lavender water on your sheets. Now that's not, you could DIY that. There's zillions of recipes for that. I think it's just your, could be lavender or any a favorite essential oil with some distilled water in a spray bottle. Just spritz it when you make your bed. Ooh, won't that be nice when you come back and roll the sheets back to climb into bed tonight? Lovely. In the bedroom as well. Maybe get yourself a silk pillowcase because that is a really nice thing to sleep on. I have one now. I had it for the longest time and I did exactly what Anita's saying don't do. I kept it in the box because I thought someone gave it to me for a birthday gift probably like five, eight years ago. I found it in my underwear drawer and I was like, it was in this long, pretty box. I'm like, what is this? And I was like, oh, this is this can't be underwear. It's very, very big. And I was like, oh, it's that silk pillow clay case so-and-so gave me. And I thought, I'm going to just use it. And you know what? I was like, oh, how am I going to take care of this? How can I wash it? And I was like, whatever. Kind of like I feel about my outdoor pillows. Like, if you can't hang with me, well, you know, you can just hang as long as you can. So I throw it in the washing machine. Now it's washed mm-hmm. silk. It still feels great. I don't iron mm-hmm. it. My head squishes it down when I put the pillow in it and then I lay on it and it feels fabulous. Well, and it makes your hair stay nice. Uh, I use a silk pillow or a satin pillowcase every night. And uh, if you don't get a chance to wash your hair the next day, it's going to look great. For some reason, that just really protects your hair. So I think that's a great luxury thing to do. Another thing is if you're on a budget and you want a luxury look, I'm going to say it. Avoid the trends as much as you can. Uh, Stick with the classics. And here you can spend a little more money because you're going to keep it longer. Whereas if it's something trendy, you know, don't spend much money on it because in a few years it's going to go out. So if you're on a budget, being trendy is very, very expensive. And here's the thing. I've, I've bought a lot of vintage and antique things. And The thing about that is there's always a market for them, whereas there's not always a market for the five-year-old Target stuff. That stuff usually ends up going to Goodwill, but the stuff that I buy is is still very popular. So I have a pile for my friend who has a booth at Roundtop for her to come get. And so I'm going to be able to sell a lot of stuff that I bought, um, you know, 10 years ago and then... Actually, I'm hoping not to buy any more. I'm hoping just to move it out because I've got so much stuff. <laughs> and Good I luck. can't believe, I, can't, I know. Well, but the thing that I've found is I used to feel like if I got rid of one piece, I could buy one piece. But now I kind of have a, if I get rid of 10 things, I can buy one thing. <laughs> so I'm yeah. on a process of, I'm personally on a process of moving more things out. I probably have more stuff than you do. So you, I think you might have more stuff than I do. I don't know. Maybe. I, I've oh maybe, maybe definitely okay. your di- maybe maybe but your dishes for sure for sure mm-hmm. that I know that but an- another thing to do is just as a little tiny luxury pick a signature scent for your home instead of having a lot of different candles that smell all different ways uh pick one and you can change it for the seasons if you feel like you want to change it up but there's just something about having a certain scent in your home that does that just feels luxurious, doesn't it? Even just saying it. Oh, mm-hmm. I have a signature scent for my home. So find oh, it sounds a, fantastic. Yeah, find a, a soy, organic, clean burning candle that you really love. And when you spend a little bit more for a candle, and I'm not saying, I mean, some candles are like $80, $100. Talk about burning money. I'm not doing that. But you know, in that like the $25, $40 range, 
a lot of them are like 60 plus hour burns. Maybe on a weekend, if you're home, you might have it on for a while, but more than likely, you're not going to have it burning for hours and hours on end. So it's going to last you a long time. So if you find something that you really love, definitely experiment, you know, try one. If you love it, then get a couple more and just put them all around. So if you've got two floors, put one in your bedroom, put one in the living room and light them. I love to light a candle when I come down in the morning. If I'm going to have a morning where I'm going to have my cup of tea and maybe look at my emails or prep for decorating tips and tricks or something like that, I'll have a candle close by. And then when I'm finished with, you know, an hour or so of work, I'll blow it out and, you know, really kind of like start my more active day where I'm not going to be in that room with the candle. But the scent has now permeated my entire house. And I love that. So later on in the afternoon, I'm coming back from an errand or something like that. My house smells fabulous. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it's really nice. It's just that little thing. And just something that you'll notice, kind of like touching the towels and really engaging with these small, affordable luxuries. The scent, you'll notice it for sure. Well, in true confessions... I have a diffuser. I didn't know we had that today, but Uh, I'm trying to come up with something. Well, I'm just thinking about, you said the signature scents, and I have uh, these essential oils and the diffuser, and I was brutally cleaning out the shelf next to the diffuser that has all these cords and... Ooh, cords. Yeah, well, guess what I think I threw out? Oh, no. Yeah. Diffuser cord. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what's this? <laughs> when I, if Peter heard that story, he'd say, serves you right, Anita, because I am always like, do we need this anymore? Does this go to anything? And then everyone's like, oh, just keep it. You never know. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not keeping that. <laughs> like, Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, okay. So, well, you might some... be able to, just in, as an aside, my friend, you might be able to find another one because they're kind of somewhat universal. Maybe you could find something else that'll just plug it, stick into well, it. Well, the diffusers are not that expensive. So okay. if I get real into that again, or, you know, you can just put the oils on like a cotton ball and kind of put it around your house. So that's another option. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. 
but only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. So another thing, add real plants. It really does make a difference. It does feel very luxurious. And if you look in high-end magazines, there are always, always real plants in the home. So this is what I'm going to call a luxury item. And if you want to really elevate it even more, put it in an elegant planter. One of my plants is in my silver champagne bucket. And boy, does it look fabulous. I have a plant in a silver champagne bucket as well. I love those for plants. And of course, you're not going to plant the plant actually where the dirt is touching the bucket. You're going to keep it in the nursery container or a plastic container inside of that. So it's super easy to water too, right? You just mm-hmm. take it out. Right. I put mine in the sink. I give it a nice little spray and, right. and, and let it really soak in the water. And then when it's drained enough, I'll put it back in there. And even you can tuck in some paper towels or something in the bottom of it. Because if you've got one of those vintage champagne buckets you don't want it to you know have the water to be in there right i pull it i keep everything in the little green buckets and yeah. i pull it out of the planters put it in the sink water everything and then put everything back in the in the planters right so do you have some items or you want to still talk about ways i to- have just a, a few more things oh I yeah just wanted to mention. yeah and that is the things in your home that you really don't like set them free Let them go live a free life far, far away. You know, we call that the catch and release. Oh, yes. That was our, one of our listeners' husband came up with that awesome phrase, catch and release. It's catch and release. So if they're not working for you anymore, let them go. And I think that is so freeing. I think we've all had something in our house that we really didn't like. And it was just bringing the whole thing down. And it did not help create this luxury feel because we just felt very trapped. So let those things go. And let me just rift off that idea for a second. If you're doing that, and sometimes that might be a big piece of furniture, you're going to then enjoy more space and more space is going to equate to luxury where you're not crowded in. It's no Mm -hmm. room is going to feel luxurious if it's crowded and cluttered. Mm -hmm. So if you get rid of those things and then you create some space, some air, some negative space, however you want to refer to it, that is going to add in a subtle way to your luxurious feel. So true. Another thing I wanted to mention now, I did say something about avoid the trends and how I had bought vintage and antique things, but that's actually the next tip of mine is to buy vintage and antique. And because these have often a luxurious feel, not all of them, but some of them do. And it's funny when I was doing a lot of sponsored blog posts and doing all this photography and styling of these products, and I would mix them in with things in my house for the photos. And pretty much every time someone would say, yeah, that's, that's okay. That's nice. That thing that you're taking, took the photo of, of the sponsor's product, but what's that gorgeous thing behind it? (laughs) And it was always an antique, like a French chair or something. It was always something because, you know, they knew, they knew, wait a minute, this is unique, this is elegant, this is a one of a kind, and I don't see stuff like this. Okay, so a few other thoughts. Add a rug, because that's one of the biggest surfaces in the room is the floor, so if you can add something really beautiful on the rug, that's gonna really elevate the space. And I think another thing that we don't do is change out those ugly old lampshades. Go check out your lampshades. I was at somebody's house recently, and the lampshade, I mean, I'm not joking, it was from the 1960s and it was dented. Oh, no. Anita, <laughs> did you have to flee the home? <laughs> no, but every time I went over there, I it was like, I would just end up this, just like, bang this out st- a little. I would just, I know, I would just end up staring at it. And I, 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 really, <laughs> I, was, I just wanted to just bring, you know, a new lampshade and say, can yeah. I just change these out for you? Oh, I just happen to have a drum shade in my trunk. <laughs> I Do you know, mind if I just bring that in? The rug. It's another thing that you're going to be touching. Your tootsies, your foot, your babies, whatever, they're going to be on it. People are going to be feeling the rug. Not only is it a visual thing, but you're going to feel it. So if you're engaging with that and you're walking on it or you're sitting on it, it's another way to add luxury. And you're really going to notice that not only visually, but it's the thing, what we talked about in the beginning. It's tactile. You are engaging it with, and with it every day and it's going to make an impact on you. So that could be a bigger item. And again, we've said you don't have to spend a ton of money on rugs, but you know, if you don't have a rug at all, 
then think about adding something in a room that will really bring it all together, but also add this sense of luxury. Mm -hmm. Another thing to do is to store your items in attractive containers. If you have to have things sitting out, then put them in some beautiful rattan baskets or something. Uh, again, that's just such elegance to have that stuff covered where you're not having to look at unattractive stuff when you walk in your house. You want to just see beauty when you walk in the door. Yeah. We've talked about storage does not have to be ugly. Uh, rid yourself of the plastic if you can. You know, the bins are great, but maybe that's for the garage or the attic or the Christmas and holiday decorations and whatnot. But if you're doing things like storing things in your kitchen, well, yeah, use something rattan, use a basket, use a pretty pitcher. I keep my batteries and rubber bands and various other miscellaneous little things in this beautiful set of French canisters. It, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, I wouldn't use them for the sugar and the flour and things like that, what they were originally intended for, because they're older, they have some dings and chips, the enamelware is coming off. So, you know, I'm not sure that they'd even be food safe, but they're gorgeous. And I love them and I wanted to keep them out and there's a whole bunch of them. And so they're taking up space. So now I let them work for me too. So they're in the house. Everybody knows that's where the batteries are. I love that idea. Storage does not have to be ugly and it can be really adding to the luxurious feel in your home. Okay. So I'm ready for the, my items and I just have a few. I'm so excited about your items. Yes. And I have just three items. Okay. Me too. Perfect. Because this could go on and on. I mean, we could be here tonight. Yes. <laughs> if we just put everything in here that we think adds, adds luxury. So my first item is an elegant cabinet pull because I'm thinking the cabinet pulls have changed so much over the last few years and so many of them look dated. So what about a 10 pack of brushed brass cabinet pulls and this set of 10 is $42 on Amazon. And they're beautiful. I'll, you'll, I'll include the link so you can see them, but they're really pretty. And I think if, if, you ha if your cabinets needed a little refresh, this would go a long way in making them really beautiful. Yeah. And again, I'm going to nail it home again. It's something you're going to not only be seeing, you're going to be, gonna be touching it. So if it feels good in your hand, rather than feeling like a cheap little knob or something with no heft to it, it's going to feel good in your hand. And that's just going to add that subtle sense of luxury as you're going about your day. Magic Linen, and Eden, I love this company, and we have products from them. Magic Linen makes these tea towels. They come in so many different beautiful colors. And I have to say, their color choices are so beautiful and very true to what they look like on the internet. You know, because sometimes you see a color and it's not really right at all. They have 66 five star reviews and they are $12. So you could get one. You could get a few from your for your kitchen. You could even use them in a powder room. I love these, and they I do have them. They feel great in your hand, they, and it's like linen. They just get better with use, like us. They did get better you, with did age. Did you get the ruffled ones? Is that the, are those the ones you're talking about? I have some ruffled ones and some plain ones. These the twelve dollar ones are the plain ones. They don't have the ruffle on them. Oh, look at those colors! I had to go look at them because you got me all excited. Yeah, I mean, for 12 I, bucks, that's a great price. Well, my preference is the are the ruffled ones, yeah. and those are, let's see here, $3 more. $3 more for a little added luxury of the ruffle. Okay, so going back to being a good shopper. So right now, Anthropology is having a sale, and I found a gorgeous throw that is kind of a raspberry color, uh, pink it's a little pink in it a little yellow and it's a, a plaid with a it's so beautiful and it's like a hundred dollar throw for 34 dollars i mean the thing about it is even if you didn't like this one anthropology has some very unique and beautiful items so let's say this one's not your jam or it's sold out keep an eye out because they have sales and then at some point they'll have 50 percent off of the sale price and that's when you want to go in there and see what they've got. Uh, so that that's kind of part of that being a good shopper and look around. And maybe it's not what you were looking for, but you might find something really exciting and something that's really going to rev up your house. So pillows or throws, that's going to, a real way to 
kick up your sofa or your chair, kick it up a notch, uh, because what you're really going to focus on, I think, are these really beautiful pillows on this chair or the sofa or the throw rather than the sofa if it's not so exciting. And the thing about this throw that I would use it for if you have a sofa that you don't like is to stretch it along the back of it. Don't don't uh, fold it up and drape it over the arm. Stretch it out along the back and where it that becomes the back of the sofa. That's a great way to give your sofa a whole new look. It's a little kind of boho-y, mm-hmm. and I think it's just a fabulous way to go. I love Anthro for really unique pieces, and they seem to rotate out what they their inventory a lot. So if you're buying something like this throw that Anita's talking about, you're probably never going to see it again, or there's going to be very few of them to start out with. So it's not going to be something where you're going to see them coming and going in other people's homes. And I've trained my girls in all stores, but in particular Anthro, because any of the ones that we shop in, they have a great clearance section. It's always in the back. They're not always that organized, but it kind of adds to the fun of the hunt. But you can find some fabulous things back there that, as Anita is saying, are marked down and then marked down again. And you'll get something like maybe some tapers or a pillow cover or a throw or something like that. They also have clothes back there 90% of the time. But the housewares are really fun. So if you haven't explored the clearance area in your local anthropology, <laughs> give it a whirl. It's like a place to add to your your circuit where you might want to troll through every once in a while and see what's going on. I meant to talk about this while we were talking about items, but we can emphasize it right now with this particular item is affordable luxury. How about this? Add a monogram to something. It really adds elegance to your home and your look. If something is monogrammed. Of course, you don't want to monogram everything. And it would be small items, most likely, maybe some bath towels, maybe some napkins, even paper napkins with your monogram on them. If you're having company, that just really says that you took the time and the care. And it it just says elegance. I think monograms are beautiful. So I found this Etsy shop. It's called Robin's Nest. And she just does monogramming on various things, lots and lots of napkins. So I found this set of hem-stitched monogram dinner napkins. They're $18 each. So maybe you get four, maybe you just get two, maybe you get one. But even at six, you're getting hand-stitched, monogram, hem-stitched napkins. You know what hem-stitch is? And it's where you have that little bit of an opening between the the napkin and the edge of the napkin where it's like little squares made of the stitchery. Even if you bought six or eight, it's still a great deal for that type of item. And it's something you'll have your whole life long, unless you change your monogram, I guess. (laughs) Better make sure that your monogram is the one you're going to keep before you purchase these. That really made my only caveat. (laughs) Well, you know, you can just, just do your first, first name. Yeah. If, if you're not sure, just do the first initial. <laughs> that might be a message. Like at Thanksgiving, you're like, oh, just have monogram with my first initial on it. Yeah. If the things <laughs> with the full monogram start disappearing, that's a bad sign. <laughs> oh, but these are fabulous. And you can find all different colors and whatnot. I picked out something pretty neutral to link in the show notes so it could have appeal, a bro- more broad appeal. But go and check out her shop. She has beautiful things. Clearly, we're on the same wavelength Uh because my third item is a monogrammed item also, and they are monogram bath towels uh, from Ballard Designs. But here's the thing. The monogram, it adds $6.50 to the price. So, I mean, if you're like penny pinching, then of course you're going to say, well, I can't afford that. But if you're wanting to add luxury, $6.50 to add luxury to your home, I think it's totally worth it. And like you said... Not all of your towels have to be monogrammed, but if you have kind of a special towel or two that are, then I think those are the ones that you use all the time. And guess what? So they fray at the end of the year. Or you could go the show towel route. And if you have a towel bar, then you get two or one and you just get one or two monogrammed and they hang there and you just (laughs) give the instruction that they are not to be used. And then the other ones can be the cheaper towels. Yeah. So I have another confession. God, I, so my, I really have to think. I am like, I'm feeling like I'm in today. the box and I got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I had some Turkish towels that were actually really absorbent. There weren't regular Turkish towels. So were, these were kind of a cross between an American bath towel and a Turkish towel. But I had them rolled up so beautifully oh, in this basket I, by the I tub. I feel it. I feel it already. I know. Right? They were my show towels. And mm-hmm. one day I said, why am I saving these? I have these gorgeous towels sitting here and I'm not using them. Well, I started using them and they're super absorbent and they're oversized. And I'm thinking... I could have been using these this whole time <laughs> and I was struggling with just the crappy towels. Like these are nice towels. So I've started using them and you know what? Maybe I have to replace them in a year, but I don't care. I'm going to wow. use them anyway. You've been telling us to use all the good stuff and you've even gone so far as to use your own show towels. You are <laughs> practicing what you preach. I love it. That's right. I'm, I'm going to go take an extra shower today and use my show towels now. <laughs> you should. No, but you did get me on the, the special way you rolled them in there because I feel that. You know, I do that myself. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm, okay, yeah, to unroll that, there's another towel right there. Did you have to do that? But you know what? You make an excellent point. And we really should be using all the good stuff, including the big yummy towels. Okay, now heading into the bedroom, talked about that silk pillowcase. And I looked around for all of you and I found one for twenty nine ninety nine. It's mulberry silk. No, I don't know all of that much about silkworms, but I do know that mulberry silk is a high quality silk. I think it's the fact that the um the strands, the threads, the what what the little worms do is very long <laughs> and so it's very sturdy. I think that's the whole idea behind mulberry silk. And it's from a company called Fisher's Finery. That sort of fits right in with what we're talking about today. It's a a site that was unknown to me until this exploration into affordable luxury. But I checked them out. They've got a lot of cool things. But they have this mulberry silk pillowcase standard size, $29.99. You can get it in a queen and you get it in a king as well. Of course, it's a little bit more for the bigger ones, but not much more. That sounds so heavenly, a silk pillow. And all these will be linked in the show notes, of course, so you can check out everything. Do you have a uh, DTT Defines for us today? I do. And remember, Marcy emailed us asking about her wall. Marcy and the odd walls. <laughs> yes, that's right. Marcy and the odd wall. So she sent us a picture of her wall. And Marcy, this is for you. Hey, Marcy. And, yeah. So the wall didn't go all the way up to the ceiling. I'd say there was about a foot between the top of the wall and and the ceiling. And you say, why, oh, why? Of course, my first question is, why? <laughs> why would the builder do that? I don't get that. The only thing I could think of was air circulation, because she's in Florida, and we did a consult recently with someone in Florida, and they had the same wall thing. Is it for the air conditioning? I don't know. Uh, did they run out of materials? Houston. I don't know. I live in Houston, and uh, I think it's just as hot and humid here as it is in Florida, only we don't have a view of the ocean here. So uh, to get us through, you know, the the humidity. (laughs) So no, I mean, we don't have that here. So I don't know why the builders do that. But anyway, but they did. And so the question was, what is this wall called? Now, I looked it up because I didn't know. I'd never even seen this until we had the consult with our other uh, lovely client. There are three terms people use for a short wall. It's either a pony wall, a knee wall, or a half wall. And that is all the same thing. And it typically refers to a three foot tall wall, but the definition says it can refer to a wall of any height, so long as it does not attach to the ceiling. Huh. And I and I did see in a forum that a user referred to it as a partition wall, which is I think what you were calling it. That's what Kelly. I called it in the email back to her because I, I wouldn't call it a pony wall because or a knee wall or anything because I always think of those as much shorter. Right. That's right. Because that's the uh, connotation is a shorter wall. But the denotation is really more of the the, the could be any height, although it's not actually in the dictionary. Uh, so the term partition wall often refers to a non load bearing wall. Mm. So that's my concern with calling it a partition wall, although I would say it is a partition wall. How could it, it be load bearing? It's not hitting the ceiling. Well, what I'm saying is the term partition wall refers to a non-load-bearing wall. Right. So if you just use that term, it might be confused. It might be confusing. Yeah, so that's my concern. Gotcha. So I'm going to call it a tall pony wall (laughs) or a tall pony partition wall. (laughs) 
<laughs> because I can't okay. find it either, Marcy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Forget a pony. It's a horse. It's that tall. I mean, come on. That's right. It's, it's a, a horse, horse wall. wall. There you go. You got it. Okay. Kelly just named it. We're going to put it on. We're putting it on the internet. How it's can a I horse do that? I, can I submit that to Wikipedia or something? <laughs> I think you should. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT. And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well. And we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. What's your crush? My crush is a book that we were both sent I don't know, it's just sort of out of the blue. We got this book. It's beautiful. And I want to share with everybody today. It's The Art of Living with White by Chrissy Rucker. Chrissy started the White Company uh, many years ago, and that's been a company in England. And I think they might also have storefronts here in America. But it is a stunning book. They go through 10 different homes of all different sizes and price points. And explore living with whites and neutrals. So it's really a masterclass in decorating with white and neutrals in a beautiful book and gives you a lots and lots of ideas of how to live with white, make it cozy, and express your personality through these very subdued colors. I don't know if you had a chance to have a look at it, Anita, but I thought it was stunning. Oh, Yes, it was stunning. And in fact, I have set aside a day to just sit down and enjoy that book and a couple of other new books I have. I love those kind of days. I hope you get it. <laughs> I planned it for the last two days, but I ended up having too much work to do. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to a day where I get to sit down because it was so beautiful. And I believe these homes are all in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. Yeah. Just... Stunning homes, beautiful, clean lines, uh, very refreshing, very restful. Yes, very calming. 
really beautiful. So it's it's a beautiful coffee table book. It's it's nice and thick, and it's got a lovely cover. So you know, it just looks really good. Uh, it looks really good in my living room, I have to say. So I, I like it for that as well. But it is so enjoyable when you crack it open. So if you're living with whites and neutrals, or you're thinking about going that route, but you're not sure how to really make that work and give it a sense of yourself, personality, and coziness, I think that this book is a great resource for you. What's your crush? Some faux boxwood topiary balls. <laughs> it's so silly, but I have been thinking a lot about faux boxwood <laughs> topiary balls because that is yeah uh, yes. yeah because sometimes if I'm traveling and whatnot, it, I'm very sad when my front containers on my porch don't look good, and I'm not sure because being such a gardener as I am, if I could do that, but I have these metal urns that have no drainage. I love them, but they have no drainage and they're metal. So when it's hot here and it's hot here a lot, you know, they, they're burning hot. So you really can only put certain plants in there and there's the area for the soil is very limited. So you either have to put something like a succulent or you have to put something that you're willing to water like every other day. So I thought, could, cause I have several ones that are bigger with real plants in them. I thought, could I keep the urns out and maybe get faux boxwood ball and here you are with the answer i think it's a message well well so because i'm not always here to water and you can't control what's going on outside your house like you said because if it's outdoors it needs to be watered more the sprinklers aren't going to get it it's up on the porch so about a year ago i caved and bought some faux boston ferns which looked very real after a while the faux fades and it doesn't fade to a lighter color it fades to a weird color <laughs> that looks very fake very I don't know unnatural. If you this. yeah okay. very unnatural kind of bluish and I <laughs> was out there of course we had guests coming and I'm like oh great these are so obviously fake now uh and that's when I decided to buy the boxwoods but they didn't come until after the, the company came but anyway but but these are massive because I have some big tall they're like three foot planters mm -hmm. on the front you know the kind of contemporary they're black and they kind of oh yeah I have um Mm -hmm. uh, so I got the 19.7 inch boxwood balls. Are they from Ballard? Are they Ballard boxwood balls? No, no. from Amazon. Oh, you talking my from language. Amazon, yes. Because the Ballard no, ones the... are kind of spenny, and I was like, I don't know if I even want them. How much were those? Do you remember? I don't remember, but enough to make me go, mm, I'm not even really sure, and I, I'm not going to do it. Well, the 19-inch were kind of expensive, I'm not going to lie. But the 15-inch, I think they were less than $100 for two. That wasn't the case with mine. Okay. But uh, they've got some, they kind of, they come in two pieces. You snap them together, and there's some little green ties that you can use, and you just kind of tuck them in, and you don't see them. I think they look great. I will send you a picture of them. Please, I, I'm pretty happy. Okay. Yeah, I think they look pretty okay. awesome. You might have so. to pop that on your Insta so everybody can see. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Because, yeah, but, just yeah. don't send it to me. We have to share it with everybody. Oh, okay, <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, you may have, I learned a lot. I got some great affordable luxury tips. And I think you sent a message to, from the universe to me about these boxwood balls. I think I might do it. But I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. And now okay. we're all just out there with our faux outdoor greenery. I love it. And, you know, the drought has just been so brutal here. We're in a historic drought here in California. So I just feel really bad watering all the time. But I want my house to look great. And I hate when I walk past or I go for a run and I go past my house. I'm like, oh, dead stuff, dead stuff in the urns. Not good. <laughs> well, that's the problem. I, if I was home all the time, you know, it would be great to have just this assortment of beautiful flowers in there. I mean, of course, you would have to be changing them out all the time, watering them all the time. But if you have other things going on in your life, or maybe you're gone for a weekend, uh, things happen. So much fun today. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. 
It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.